Hello everyone and welcome to Cherub Teaching Center. Today we are going to move ahead with advanced function in Google Sheets. And the thing that I'm going to train you today is how to make a graph. Now, before I start training, why do I need a graphical representation? The reason behind that is it is easy to understand. Moreover, it gives your data a more visual appeal. Now, in case if there are numbers in front of you, it would be very difficult for a person to understand the numbers because whether there is an increase, whether there is a decrease, that cannot be assessed. So, for the same, the graphical representation is one of the easiest way out. And that is what we are going to learn today. So, a graphical representation is beneficial for everyone from a professional aspect from a student aspect and then if i talk about from an educator aspect as well now the benefits to an educator is an educator if that person has a google sheet and there are scores of the entire class function in that what that person can do is that person can turn that into a graphical representation and that would give that person an idea what is the performance metrics of every student sitting in the class. However, for the student, it could be beneficial from an aspect if that person has experiment reading with him or her, that could be turned into a graphical representation in order to understand what exactly is the trend. Is it an increase, decrease or what exactly is the trend which is going on? And Along with that, from a professional aspect, again, we can use the graphical representation again to assess the performance of a function or a process altogether. So, let's start over. Now, we are going to start with how to make a graph. And as I've already stated, we are going to utilize Google Sheets for it. So, in order to access the Google Sheet, let me show you how you can access so again, the process remains the same. If you people want to access the Google Sheet, what you people will be doing is, you people will be going to the browser. So open a new browser and then click on this G Suite apps, scroll this thing down and then you will see a Google Sheet option over here. So you can click on this Google Sheet and in case if it is already lying with you in your system, then you can open it up from the drive as well. So the drive is accessible from here. So once I have the Google Sheet in front of me, just for the sake, I've created a test data. So let's say this is the data which is there in front of you. And as I have trained you last time, first and foremost, whichever data is there with me, I need to align that data. And for that, I need to select the entire data and then I will be going over here and then I would be clicking on the center align. And then I would be highlighting the headings that I have it with, it, with me. So what I would be doing is I would be highlighting the headings. Then I would be going on to the spell color and I can select any color from here. And then again, since I need a table, so what I can do is I can do a tabular format. I can create a table, select this entire data go to this borders section and then I can select it over here. Now my data is looking much more, you know, presentable. Now, so over here, the number of students are very limited. But what if the strength of an institute is in hundreds or it is in thousand? It would be very difficult for me to analyze. And moreover, sometimes what happens is it becomes difficult for me to assess the trend which is going on. Why the graphs they are being utilized? The graphs they are being utilized in order to analyze a trend. Sometime to, in order to analyze the trend over a year or it could be for a particular year, it could be for a particular month, it can be for a section, it depends upon the usage. So let's start over. So if I want to create a graph, what I would be doing is first and foremost to create a graph, you people need to select the data that you would like to put in. So if I need to create a graph for this entire data, I would be selecting the entire table. But in case if you see, if you would like to make a graph till test three only, then you will be selecting like this. So once that is there, so let's say this is the data which I have it in front of me. It is for a section 
and the students that you see in front of you so these students has appeared in almost four tests as of now and i want to send a report in regards to it that what is the student performance which is going on in the class so before i start over with the creation of the graph let me name this so let's say this is my section a so i would be naming this as section a okay so once this section a is there in front of me so what i would be doing is i would be selecting the entire data so there are two ways of creating a chart in google sheet either you can select the entire data which is there in front of you you need to click over insert over here and then you see this chart option this is one way or you can do the right click also so let's proceed ahead to the insert option i would be going i would be clicking on the insert as i've shown you in front of you and then i would be clicking on the chart option so the moment i will be clicking on the chart option by default there would be a chart which would open in front of you so it's not necessary that you would be utilizing this chart only so there are chances where i can even choose the chart style okay so this one is the default style that i have it in front of me so if i don't want a column chart so this one is the bar graph that you see in front of you or a column chart if i want to create a line chart or if i want to select another chart there are multiple options over here line chart is basically used when i want to show the trends over a certain period of time column graph can be used again for analyzing the performance it could be for a specific reason anything it could be for a section or anything like that pie chart is going to be used only if my data is in a percentage format and rest of the things that is i won't be touching today because this is again further advanced so let's move on to the chart the basics thing that we will be covering today so today we are going to cover only the basics and that also the column chart or the line chart that we would be proceeding ahead so let's say in case if i have selected column chart okay and i have multiple options i can do it in a stack column chart option it could be a 100% stack so that is totally up to me okay now once i have done this so there are multiple options that you see on the right hand side that becomes highlighted okay so first and foremost whether i would like to stack my data like the ways that i have shown you in front of you which particular option would you like to choose as of now it's none so if i select the standard you can see over here this is how the stack things are coming stack is one of one above the other so these colors these represent the four test you can see that test four is green in color test three is yellow in color test two is red in color and uh, test one is blue in color and these as you know whenever we draw a graph there is x axis and then i have a y axis as well on the x axis you people can see i have the names of the student okay and over here since i have selected a range so the range is from b4 to f12 why the range is from b4 to f12 why because i have selected so this one is b4 so it is from the student name till f12 which is my last entry that i have selected so as of now on the x axis i only have one information which is the student name and if i would like to add labels okay and let's say let me show you how the labels look like let's say this is the thing that i have there in front of me and if i want to add the student label let's see what happens on the x axis if i click on add label option you can see it is giving me the labels over here that this particular graph is for whom so this thing would be considered only if on x axis i do not have the student name and i would like to do it this way okay so i would remove the labels okay and the next thing that i have it there in front of me is tests so i have four tests this is the data which i have selected test 1 test 2 test 3 and test 4 again for the test also if i would like to add label i will click on add label and you can see now on the top i am getting the student name okay so this one is for J jason this one is for janet again it is up to you whether you would like to keep the labels or not okay and then you can remove labels so over here the chart type that i've chosen uh, the things are quite you know observant in 
x axis where the student names they are automatically coming up and there is no need for me to add the label but sometime what happens is when my data is huge and i have you know numbers also involved with it then i can add labels to it okay so this one is the things that you see in front of you and so this information that you people have it over here this information represent the test the data okay and then along with the test i have the various information okay so you can see if i select test 4 my data becomes highlighted okay and if i want to punch in the data label you can see this is how it happens now that is what i was trying to tell you initially the things that i've shown you over here was that i have the data this is the content that I have it there in front of me. These are the four tests which individual person has appeared for. And in the graph, the performance that I'm going to show it to other people, I would like that on the top of the graph, the numbers should also reflect. So let me move this thing a little bit towards right and then I will show you what exactly I'm trying to do. See, you can just pick it up and then you can drag your mouse wherever you would like to fit in it. You can fit in over the screen. So... As stated, so let's consider the first student, which is Rohan. Rohan has 12 scores in test 1, 15 scores in test 2, 11 in test 3, and 16 in test 4. So from this data, though on the y-axis, I have a range in between 0 to 20, because the highest score was 20, and out of 20, these scores they are. But sometime, I would like that my data on the top of it, every student, it should reflect that what is the individual score that they have got. So what I can do is I can select the test like this. Let's say I've selected test one. Okay. And then I can go it over here. All right. The color is again up to you. Which color do you want? If you want to change the color, because this is the automatic formatting which was available in Google Slide. But if you would like to change the color of the graph as well, that's totally in your hand. You can change it from here. Okay. And this one is on left axis. If you want to move it to the right axis, again, it is totally up to you how you would like to do it. So let me just show you. If I say that is now the scores or the range is coming up over here. So it's up to you whether you, how you want to do it. Okay. And um, format data point. So, I mean, sometime there is a specific information that I would like to select it from the chart. For example, for Rohan, I would like to select a certain data point. So it should start with this like Rohan so I can click on OK and then that this thing you can see in front of you that this is how the things they come into picture but again uh, as I've stated this is totally in your hand what exactly you would like to do so we are not going to do this thing as of now so let me show you we are going to move back so this thing what I've done is I'm choosing a specific color for example for Rohan for test one I would like to keep a specific color and then again I can add further to format points that's totally so formatting this data point option is for choosing one specific entry and then accordingly on the basis of that you can add color coding to it okay so if I want to add data labels now if I click on data label and I selected the blue line which is for test one so you can see on the top of it it is showing me the scores also now Okay, and next if I select this uh, red line over here, now for red line is for which one? The test two, I need data labels over there also. You can see on the top of the red line also I'm getting the data scores. And in case if I need it for all the tests, let's say for test three, which is yellow in color, I can click on the data labels. Again, it is giving me the number data. And if I would like to click over here, again the green line, I click on data label. Again, it is giving me, you know, the scores on the top of it. So like this, you will be able to analyze individually what were the scores. So I don't have to look at the, you know, the table again. The entire information is available in front of me in the data chart itself. Okay. So this was when I'm going to move ahead. And then again for the data label as well, I can change the formatting. I can make it bold if required or not. Bold is going to make only this number bold if you want. Because sometimes what happens is when I create a chart in case if the, you know, uh, the criteria for a specific test, the scores, they are going down. I can highlight this. I can make this to be a bold option altogether. And then I can select the text color as well. So that's totally in my hand. So this was when uh, 
you know for the individual labels uh, i have selected the data label and it is giving me the data entry all together now let me show you another thing now that i would like to show you so now the next thing which comes into picture is trend, trend line so trend line you people can analyze it is giving me a specific trend okay so trend means what exactly is it increasing is it decreasing or how the progression is actually going about so that you people can do it with the help of over here and you can label it and you can custom it and you can even put an equation as well that depends okay so when i move on to the data labels i have already informed you over here the type is value okay but in case if i would have put any other information that would have been visible over here so i can even you know change the alignment or the positioning inside n how i'd like to put my numbers if they should be inside the block or the stack inside base i mean near to the bottom or i would like to put it outside end as well so that's again totally up to you what exactly you would like to do it and then again this particular uh, you know font formatting is also in my hand so the data that i've put in over here how exactly i would like to put it i would like to add a font to it so i can do it over here by selecting this option now uh, we are moving on to the next option which is legend so legend is exactly uh, i mean this thing that i have it on the top okay all right so i can even format my legend because as such the legend legend is what is the title of the graph so over here if if it is mentioned test 1 test 2 test 3 test 4 so the things are not clear for which particular section is it and for which subject is it so if i want to intimate someone that these are the scores for section a i can put the things in the legend okay and that's going to highlight it over here so now it becomes quite clear what exactly is this graph all about so you can uh, you know change the chart title over here from here and then the chart subtitle if you want to create you can do it and if i want to put in horizontal access to the title for example horizontal horizontal the thing is already there which is uh, student name and on vertical axis if i would like to put something let's say scores i would like to tell that these are scores out of 20 okay okay so now on the x and the y axis both i have it so one thing that i need to tell you people is whenever you are creating any chart the legend is very essential the heading or the title is very essential if you are not putting the heading if you are not putting the you know the title all together then it is going to be one of the you know uh, an unclear situation what this graph is actually representing so over here again one thing that i have been training you right from the very first day is whenever you're creating a content on any of the tool your data needs to be looking aligned so i have put in a title over here but it's not looking aligned. why because it is little bit towards the left hand side and i want this thing to be in the center so what i would be doing is i would be selecting this content and then i would be you know moving on over here i can change the alignment by clicking on this option i will put it in the center yeah. so i can put it as bold as well and in case if i would like to change the font style i can change my font style of the text over here so that is going to give more reasonable coloring and i can even you know change the color of the title over here to make it a more visual appeal so that thing is also available so now i can clearly understand when i'm sharing this report with one person one individual that these are the scores for section a and along with that i can also highlight for which particular subject it is going to be so your legend should clearly state what the data is actually representing so that the things are clear to the other party to whomsoever you people are sharing okay so now let's do a quick recap before i take you to the further things we have learned today how to make a graph in order to make a graph i need to have a data in front of me 
okay now uh, one thing more that i need to tell you is people uh, let's say that the s5 is also there into picture and i want my things to be automatically highlighted so if i'm going to make any changes over here let's say i want to do the correction so automatically my data is in sync with the chart any changes that you people will be making that would be corrected in the graph instantaneously why because it is picking up the data from the graph itself and if in future test 5 is also coming up then what you people can do is when you're creating graph you people can select the entire table up till test 5 so that in future if test 5 is coming automatically you don't have to create a next you know new chart it would be automatically represented in this graph itself okay so for the creation of the graph i need to have a data with me once the data is there i need to insert a chart so what i would be do doing is i would be going to click on insert then i would be clicking on chart and it would be giving me a chart option in front of me and once the chart option is there you can even change the formatting of the chart okay so in order to change the formatting of the chart what you people can do is you can change the formatting for example now my chart thing is already ready i can right click on it and then i can do the further you know i can change the chart style i can change the chart title subtitle horizontal axis we have discussed and then we have discussed the vertical axis as well so if i want to change the chart style the moment you will be clicking on any option over here so this bar is automatically there in front of me so this was the default setup i can change the chart type from here stacking is automatically up to me whether i would like to put it in the form of a stack format or not then on the x axis i have the student name then i have series now my data represents a series i have four tests test one test two test three test four and if i would like to put in the label i've already trained you you can put the labels over here you can click on add label and that would give you whose that the scores it is okay whose student which student score it is but automatically since we have already written over here in the x-axis the name so there is no need for me to add the label because that's not required in this custom format which is automatically available and if i want to do any formatting with individual scores of the test i need to select that line and then that option will be there in front of me it would be giving me data label data label is going to pick up the data the numbers that i have it in my table and then automatically the numbers they are going to be highlighted i can even change the color of the test which is available by clicking on this option and then this data left axis or right axis that is whichever you would like to do you can see it that my scores are already my scores are on the left axis you can see if you want to put it on the right axis as well you can do it okay and uh, then i've already trained you that you people once the scores are there you can put it in a bold format you can change the font also and you can change the number color as well as per your requirement the next thing that we have spoken about is legend very very important my legend is automatically it is uh, for the title that i have it there into place so i need to ensure that my legend that i have it the title that i have it my title should clearly represent what this data is actually representing i can change the font i can change the font size my alignment needs to be proper i can make it bold or italics and i need to pick up the text color as well okay and then the series we have already discussed about the series was the pointers that i have picked up okay so chart and chart axis is done legend is done and then i'm going to talk about now for horizontal axis on the horizontal axis you people were seeing that this is what i have it there in front of me i can change the label of the font okay if i want to do it i want to do it wide so on the y on the x axis which is the horizontal axis i had the student name if i want to make it bold i can either select the font from here and then i can select the bold option from here i can even change the font size and along with the color also okay so um so again it is there in your hand okay what exactly you would like to do it so uh, i mean uh, reverse order over here if you see reverse order access i would like to show you one more thing as of now my data is starting from rohan and it is ending at sherry so first student is rohan ending student is sherry but if i would like to put it in a reverse order 
then Sherry is coming up first and Rohina is going in the end. So, this is what the reverse order acts as a two. Okay. And uh, vertical axis, if I talk about the vertical axis, I have the scores all together. I can even change the font over here if I want to make it bold. So, the numbers they are going to go bold. Okay. I can even change the size, the color over here. Okay. So, this was all about the vertical axis. And grid line as of now, I don't need it actually because my chart is quite clear. So maybe grid line, I can use it when I would be using the line chart or when other things they are there into consideration. So this was all about the chart. So in the chart, we people have put a title, then Y axis, which is the vertical axis, horizontal axis, and then we have also mentioned this data it represents that is for test data now uh, what exactly is going to happen is when i would like to share the re report and right from the day one i have been talking about it that the google tools are quite efficient that you can share the data right away i don't have to open the email and then put in my you know content over there and then attach something and then send it so if i would like to share only this graph to someone how i would be doing it is please watch this thing very carefully i would be clicking on these three dots that i have it over here so once the, i would be clicking on this i would be going to move to own sheet okay so once i would be going to move to own sheet you can see that my entire chart has been shifted to another tab you can see it over here okay all right so my entire chart is now shifted over here now if i want to you know first of all let's say before i'm going to share it with someone i would like to rename it and let's say this one was for botany just for the sake i'm saying okay so i can change the tab over here and then simply i need to click on share option okay and once i clicked on share i need to put in that person's email address okay once that person email address is there, you can make that person to be an editor. If you want that person to make any changes, only then that make that person to be an editor. But in case if you would like that person only to be a viewer, just to see the things that you have shared, he can be viewer. If you want him to be a commenter, just to put in comments, but not to change anything, you can put that person as commenter and then you will be clicking on send. But in case if it needs to be shared with a huge amount of people, then you can copy the link and then you can share the link on an email. So this way is you can, you know, send your chart just in a fraction of a second and there is no need for you to do anything. You don't have to open a separate email for that. So if I want to edit a chart, I can click on this option and I can edit it. My publishing chart is going to publish the chart. Download, you can do it. Delete, you can do it from here. And this one is for the comment history comment history is going to tell you whosoever has work on this chart if that you have given that person you know editor rights or commenting rights it will open a history in front of you exactly has said what okay so this ways i have my chart all together on a separate you know tab or on a separate sheet and this if i click on the sheet one it is going to give me the table once again so this is how you visually make the data more appealing with the help of a graph altogether all right so this was all about it for today's tutorial thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to cherub teaching center for more things coming up your way thank you so much everyone